Ten years ago, when K-pop band BTS first rose to fame in South Korea, you'd have been hard pressed to find anyone in the UK who'd ever heard of them. But fast forward to today, and K-pop dominates the Western music sales charts. Strangely enough, it's a phenomenon we've also seen in recent years with South Korean car manufacturers. Brands such as Hyundai and Kia used to be seen as left field choices, but in recent years, both brands have gone from strength to strength, and it's a trend Hyundai would like to see continue with its new SUV, the second generation Kona. Like its predecessor, it's available with petrol, hybrid, or electric powertrains, but it's the latter that we're gonna be testing today. In the next 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna walk you through the top 10 key things I think you need to know about the new Hyundai Kona Electric. Unlike the first generation Kona Electric that didn't exactly shout about being an EV, this second generation car shares a number of its design elements with its all electric big brother, the Ionic 5. And we think that's a strategic move by Hyundai to prove that the Kona Electric is the most important model in the Kona lineup. Highlights include this impossibly thin light bar that runs all the way across the front of the car, and it blends into these heavily sculpted wheel arches that also are incorporated into the front and rear bumper. And if we come around the back, you'll notice a little nod to the Hyundai Ionic 5 and 6 with these retro pixel graphics. Now, we'll leave it to you to decide if you like the design of the new Kona, but as a fan of Robocop, I'm fully behind Hyundai's new design direction. It's not just the exterior of this car that looks different to its predecessor because the interior has been completely redesigned. Taking inspiration from the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6, this car's interior is dominated by dual screens that are 12.3 inches wide and they're housed in a curved display. But before you go thinking that Hyundai has gone completely mad on touchscreens, they've actually installed many physical buttons over the Ionic 5 that relies heavily on haptic buttons. And that's great news because not only do you have physical buttons for the infotainment system, but you also have physical buttons for the climate control. And they're far easier to use on the move because you can feel them by touch, which is something you can't do with haptic buttons or touchscreens screen buttons. There's other clever touches too. In the last generation car, the gear selector was mounted on the center console, but that's been moved to a more traditional position up here on the steering column. And what that does is it frees up loads of space down here. So we now have space for a wireless phone charger, two water bottles, and there's a massive cubby bin in here for storing things like BTS's unauthorized fan guide. Now, this looks a little bit large for this space, but the reason I picked this is because a lot of this area is also configurable. So, for example, you can take out parts of the center console, and then it fits in with no problem. In terms of interior quality, it's kind of what we've come to expect from Hyundai which means that the mix of materials is fairly inconsistent. There's some really nice plush feeling materials like this faux leather on the steering wheel and this rubberized texture on the dashboard. But if you go feeling around, this up here feels like really hard, cheap plastic. And a lot of this feels quite cheap too, which is disappointing because rivals like the Peugeot E2008 that use quite an eclectic mix of materials feel a little bit more upmarket than this car. All Konas get dual 12.3 inch screens that are housed in one panel. It's a very slick looking setup, but the only problem I have is that where I've got my wheel placed, it cuts off the top of the instruments, which is something I suspect a number of drivers will have a problem with. However, if you go for a Kona in end sport trim or above, you do get a very crisp head up display as standard, which alleviates that issue. The infotainment system itself is again what we've come to expect from Hyundai, which is to say that it's got a pretty crisp screen and intuitive layout and pretty big icons that are easy to hit on the move. It doesn't particularly move the game on, but it works well and it comes as standard with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. 
Now, if you think the Kona Electric is a compact SUV and therefore won't be that appropriate for larger families, I think you might be quite surprised at how much space there is in the boot. You get 466 litres of carrying capacity in the Kona Electric, which is a little bit less than you get in a Kia Niro EV, but better than you get in a Jeep Avenger, Peugeot E2008 and BYD Atto 3. You also get a height adjustable boot floor as standard. And at the front of the car, you also have a small boot that's big enough for your charging cable. There's also plenty of space in the back of the Kona Electric. I'm five foot nine and I'm sat behind my driving position. And as you can see, I've got plenty of leg room, loads of space for my feet under the front seat and plenty of headroom. These seats also recline backwards just that little bit, but it makes quite a difference when you want to just lounge out on a longer journey. I should also note that these side windows are quite nice and tall, making it feel airy in here. And you just feel a lot less cramped than you do in a Jeep Avenger or a Peugeot E2008, because those cars have a much narrower interior. Now, before we head out there and see how this Kona Electric drives, I thought I should just cover off a little bit of history. You see, the first generation Kona was actually developed as an internal combustion engine car, and then later it was converted into an EV. But with this second generation car, it was actually developed as an electric vehicle first, and then the petrol and hybrid models were developed afterwards. So surely that means we're looking at some massive electric changes for the new Kona. Well, not exactly. Like the last generation car, there are two choices of battery available. The standard version has a 48.4 kilowatt hour battery up from 39 kilowatt hours, while the long range version gets a 65.4 kilowatt hour battery up from 64. The smaller battery yields an official range of 234 miles and the larger one 319, which is only a small increase on the previous Kona. That said, the long range can go further on a single charge than rivals such as the BYD Atto 3, Kia Niro EV and Smart Hashtag One. With a maximum charging rate of 102 kilowatts, a 10 to 80% charge will take around 40 minutes which is slightly quicker than the Atto 3 and Nero, but slower than the Hashtag 1. Speaking of performance, the long range version of this latest Kona Electric gets 13 brake horsepower more than its predecessor. Now, that's not a massive gain, but if there's one thing the last generation car didn't need was more power, it actually struggled to put that power to the ground, especially in wet conditions. Certainly coming out of junctions when you would put your foot down to let's say nip into a gap, it was too easy to spin up the front wheels. That's not a problem in this car, I'm happy to report. Hyundai has definitely put some money into making sure that the electronic systems in this car are a little bit more advanced. So you can plant your foot and it accelerates cleanly away. It's worth noting that if you go for the standard range car with its smaller 48.4 kilowatt hour battery, you also get a less powerful electric motor that puts out 154 brake horsepower rather than the 215 brake horsepower of the long range car. It also feels a lot punchier than, say, a Jeep Avenger or an E2008 or even an MG ZS. This thing accelerates up to motorway speeds with real gusto. Just don't expect that straight line performance to be backed up with agile handling. You can tell from the soft and supple ride of this car that it's been set up to prioritize comfort over sharp handling. Now, that's not to say it's wayward in the corners. It isn't at all. In fact, it's very relaxing to drive. The steering is a little bit light for my personal taste, but it's very accurate. It's linear. It builds weight nicely off center. I really don't have many complaints on that front. It does lean quite a bit in the corners, this car, but again, that's just one of the downsides to having soft, comfortable suspension. 
There is a sport mode that you can select that does add a little bit more weight to the steering and also sharpens up the accelerator response. And on a country road, I've actually been favoring that over the standard setup. This really though is a car that likes to be driven smoothly in a relaxed manner. And if you do that, it does reward you. I think the ride in this is actually better and more supple than the ride in the hybrid version we tested earlier this year. It's also a very easy car to drive smoothly. Like I said, the steering is very accurate, the accelerator is nice and linear, and the brakes are also progressive, and that's not always given in an electric vehicle. Most EVs have very grabby brakes because of their regen system, which is effectively taking that energy from the braking system and putting it back into the battery. But in this car, the brakes are nice and smooth and that makes driving on country roads like this and around town easy. The Kona Electric is also a very relaxing cruising companion. Now, we don't have our clever noise stick with us today on this launch, but my ear tells me that there's definitely less wind and road noise than you get in an MG ZS or an Atto 3. And the ride in this is really quite plush, especially on the motorway. It's certainly more settled than the hybrid Kona we tested earlier this year. It does feel like Hyundai has put more money into this electric model of the Kona than say the hybrid or the petrol when it comes to things like chassis tuning. Yes, the roads out here are very smooth, but I've been really impressed today with just how rounded and polished this car feels. And that brings me on to two cool things about the new Kona Electric. And the first is the fact that you can get it with a vehicle to load function, something that was first showcased on the Ionic 5. And effectively what it does is it turns your electric car into a massive three pin socket. So you can charge things like your laptop or perhaps if you're out camping, even boil a kettle. Clever. And the second coolest thing also involves charging. You see, the charging port now has a light in it to help you see it at night, and the flap is heated, allowing it to operate at temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees. There are three trim levels available with the Kona Electric, and prices start from just under £35,000 for the standard range and just under £40,000 for the long range. That's more than what you'll pay for an equivalent MG ZS, but it's right in the ballpark of other rivals such as the Kia Niro EV, Smart Hashtag One, and BYD Atto 3. And even if you go for the cheapest version called the Advanced, you also get plenty of kit as standard, including 17-inch alloy wheels, dual-zone climate control, front and rear parking sensors, a rear-view camera, and keyless entry. You even get a heat pump as standard for more efficient warming of the interior in cold weather. That's something you'll need to pay £900 for on a Nero EV. So where does that leave us then? Well, the all new Kona Electric might not move the game on massively from its predecessor, but all those small changes add up to one very well-rounded electric SUV. We certainly reckon it will give its rivals a real run for their money when we throw it into one of our group tests later this year. Until then, if you'd like to learn more about the Kona Electric, make sure to visit whatcar.com, where you can read our detailed four-point review. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a like and hit subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the future.